Hey guys, this is Double Wide 6, and I'm taking a little look at this uh, Porter Cable Jet Stream Pancake Air Compressor. Um, as many of you know, I've been trying to make my own air compressor, and uh, I was taking some notes off this model. Basically, it has uh, you know a pump up top, so there's a compressor up top that compresses air. And then it, that compressed air comes down this hose, goes into an elbow, and then it goes through this check valve. Uh, that allows the air to enter the tank one way, and the air can't come out of the tank. Um, the only other thing that's hooked up here to this check valve is this unloader valve. And that runs on this pipe, and that goes up and ties into the uh, electric pressure switch. And uh, I think the job of the unloader is to actually take pressure off the uh, air compressor pump so that when the air compressor fires back up when it gets down to like 90 psi the pump should start back up and um, basically what the unloader does is it allows air pressure to come off that pump so that the pump doesn't have to fight all that air compressing uh, pressure um, the check valve also doesn't allow pressure from the tank to go back up and uh, add pressure to the pump. So uh, I was basically trying to reproduce this system on my uh, silent air compressor that I was making. So what we have here is a fiberglass tank that I took out of a uh, salt water uh, water softener tank and uh, basically what I've done is I've plumbed this thing up to work as an air compressor and I'm using a compressor from uh, either a refrigerator or dehumidifier so it's going to be a silent air compressor and it's going to work with this fiberglass tank which is both strong and really lightweight and it won't rust so what I did is uh, I ordered a check valve online. I put up the check valve and on the bottom of the check valve I, I tied in, there's a little hole under here that's hard to see, I tied in uh, a copper tubing line and I ran that check valve up to my, or that unloader valve up to my pressure switch which is here and it tied in here and um, the problem I was having was when the air compressor was running, air, some of it, it, it wasn't going into the tank. It was following the path of least resistance and coming out of that unloader hole. And it was uh, leaking out right here at this uh, unloader on the back of the pressure switch. So I'm not quite sure why that was doing that and I'm kind of posting this video to ask some of you guys maybe you know why it's doing that or what I'm doing wrong because I don't really know too much about air compressors but I did learn a lot about by doing this project so anyhow with a little bit of uh, experimentation and playing around um, I realized that I could take my air pressure coming from this compressor it goes through this little hose here ties into the check valve so now the pressure stays in that tank and it doesn't want to come back and bleed into the air compressor and put pressure on it for when it restarts um, so that's hooked up down here and then up top um, there's a manifold on the back of the pressure switch one is a hose going out Another one is a pressure relief valve. If you get too much pressure, it should pop out on its own. I think it's rated at 150 PSI. And over here is actually an unloader valve. So I ended up using a separate unloader valve. Um, those of you that have been following my videos, you know recently uh, I made a video on how to repair these uh, gas air compressors and on the uh, the blue one over there I ended up taking the pressure or the unloader valve and replacing it because this that unloader valve was sticking so I had that 
and I cleaned it out and it was a little bit dirty and stuff so I cleaned it out and I plumbed this thing up and now I have it all working um, I was saying to you guys before that uh, I, I have to leave this bypass valve on here and uh, I think I'm going to use that in the uh, event that I want to drain the compressor I can open the bypass valve and that'll let some pressure off so now I'm going to show you this uh, little unit running so as you can see here I have the unit running it's nice and quiet I put a uh, like a chainsaw gas filter right on the end of this for the intake which seems to be working good and uh, I was testing it for leaks I haven't found any leaks and uh, everything looks pretty good and we're getting pretty close to 80 psi and that's what I set the uh, pressure switch to so at 80 psi it should kick off so we'll give it a couple seconds here and we'll we'll see if everything's working the way it should and the idea is to actually lay this thing horizontally in my attic and uh, this is going to go in the attic in my shed and then uh, the only thing that you'll see is this this orange line I'm going to run down and I'm going to connect to uh, my regulator which will be uh, right by my tractors out in the garage so I can put air into their tires so as you can see that thing kicked off now what I want to do is I want to let some air out of this thing and you can see it's already kicked back on so that works out pretty good so here's the difference in noise between a silent air compressor and that one's vibrating a little bit and we'll plug this one in and we'll turn this one on yeah it makes a big difference so the last thing I want to show you guys is the bypass valve and this could be used to drain the pressure out of the air compressor uh, you don't want to leave pressure in it because it can build up water and rust out your tank. In my case, I have a fiberglass tank, so we don't have to worry so much about rust. But the problem would be air uh, turning into water in that tank and then that water getting in your air tools. So this will drain, drain the tank very quickly. And that's it. So that'll get all the water pressure and air out of that tank pretty much instantly.